Though they made their own of this great new land, they rarely severed their ties with home. This is the chance of a lifetime for peace in Ireland. It's a huge day in American life. St. Patrick's Day is, uh, you know, it's a hallmark card day. Most towns by the post-Second World War period of any decent size have some form of parade. What is happy, I think, as the Irish are to celebrate St. Patrick's Day. There are 40 million Irish Americans who claim, you know, Irish heritage. The handing over of the shamrock remains the core part of the St. Patrick's Day in Washington. In different presidencies, there's been different uh, positions on the ceremony, different degrees of interest, it's waxed and waned, the presentation of the Bowl of Shamrock has remained consistent throughout. In 1952, the Irish ambassador in Washington, seasoned diplomat John Hearn, has the idea of sending a small box of Shamrock to President Truman. Truman is away on holidays, he sends one message to President Sean T. O'Kelly, the President of Ireland, saying felicitations and greetings uh, from the United States to the people of Ireland. But he sends a message back to Hearn, and he says he hopes that relations between the two countries will continue to be uh, on a, a good and effective level for coming generations. So Hearn moving to send Shamrock to the White House is very significant in terms of ratcheting up the connections between the Irish Embassy and the White House. In 1959, Sean T. O'Kelly, the President of Ireland, makes the first visit by a President of Ireland to the United States, and Eisenhower meets him at Washington Airport. And O'Kelly realizes the, the photo opportunity here, and he pins Shamrock on Eisenhower's collar at the, at the airport. And the, the Shamrock is presented as, as, as now becoming traditional. The, the election of JFK is hugely important, not only for Irish America, for the United States, the Western world, but, but for, for, for Dublin, for Ireland, that the, the Irish-American connection there, an Irish-American, a Catholic in the White House. And it's not lost on the Irish Embassy in Washington. A very seasoned old-timer who's on his last posting in Washington, uh, Tommy Kiernan, he catches the moment of what Irish America means, what Kennedy means, and what the connections between the two countries means. He ratchets up the, the significance of the shamrock ceremony. The photograph shows uh, a bowl of shamrock being presented, but if you look at the picture, you'll also see that there's a, uh, a scroll and there's a, a very ornate wooden box. And what Kiernan has done to increase the, um, the connections between the two countries is he's presented JFK with his uh, Kennedy family crest, and he's also presented him with his family tree. And if you look at the tie he's wearing, it's not a green tie. He's wearing a tie with the Kennedy crest on it. And to have that connection, that, that bloodline, if you like, to the White House, uh, is massively important for the Lamas government in Dublin. They can, through Kiernan, get the president's ear. After Kennedy's assassination, it's almost as if the Shamrock Ceremony becomes something of a homage to, to JFK. But Johnson takes on the, uh, the trappings of the, the, the Patrick's Day Ceremony as well, the, the Shamrock Ceremony. By now, it's being spoken of as a tradition. In the next years, the Shamrock Ceremony becomes somewhat more political, certainly on the American side, as Nixon uses it to announce the appointment of the new American ambassador to Dublin. Uh, Nixon announces at the, the 1969 Shamrock Ceremony that he hopes to visit Ireland at some stage during his presidency. So the, the ceremony is now being used as a way to flag forthcoming events in Irish-American relations and to show the White House's interest in Ireland. Blessed St. Patrick, we are told, died on this day in the year of our Lord, 461. And leave it to the Irish to be carrying on a wake for 1,500 years. <laughs> Reagan is very adept at playing the Irish card. The, the, the film star background is brought in here, the razzmatazz of the shamrock ceremony increases. And it begins to settle into the manner in which we're, we're more familiar with it now. The speaker's lunch is, is established, the, uh, the evening reception at the Irish ambassador's residence. By the end of the Reagan presidency, the uh, shamrock ceremony is being used to announce important moments or events of American involvement in Irish and Northern Irish affairs. 
speeches around the shamrock ceremony now all deal with the troubles, getting a solution to the troubles, that um, talks, non-violent methods are the way forward. This is the chance of a lifetime for peace in Ireland. You must get it done. Clinton's obviously very important because he's elected as somebody who has a tradition of, of visiting Ireland. He has very kind of close links with Ireland. Uh, he comes into office with a mandate to address the Northern Irish issue. So Clinton basically opens Washington to various Irish contingents to come to talk and to focus on the day, Irish-American relations, but most importantly, the issue of Northern Ireland. Bringing the partners into the peace process and the way Adams's appearance and photograph at the White House indicates is very important. So that the ceremony is acting as a, a catalyst for events during the Clinton presidency to get the peace process going. And it, it's 1994 when there's the, the first big Irish extravaganza at the White House and the traditional uh, reception is turned into a kind of monster buffet evening with songs and poetry. During the Clinton years, with a president in the White House who's actively engaged in Northern Ireland, with Northern Ireland, in a way no other president was, the Irish Embassy in Washington, the Department of the Taoiseach, the Taoiseach, the government, all have immensely important access. Mr. President, with the three leaves merging into one, the shamrock provides a perfect symbol of how different traditions can come together and find common cause. It's a unifying emblem. And there was a sense after Clinton left the White House of what would happen next. Would G.W. Bush be interested in Ireland? Would I, Ireland even figure on the White House radar? But the shamrock ceremony remained, and that's its importance, I think, historically. Few nations so small have had such an enormous impact on another. I was lucky enough to work for the first two years in the White House of the Obama administration. And St. Patrick's Day then, as always, but particularly under, I think, President Obama, has really become uh, a day to um, have fun, to, to enjoy uh, the relationship, and to find new ways to celebrate it. President Obama was the first president to turn the fountain in front of the White House green, a little bit like they did in Chicago with the river. Also, I think it has to be one of the biggest uh, parties we have at the White House. I think what's interesting is is the way he does slightly shift the focus of the day. As it were, by the time he's into office, the work has been done in Northern Ireland. The peace agreement's been signed. Um, there is a, an assembly up and running. So you see a subtle shift that while the Irish is still central to it, they're being positioned much more as symbolic of um, a successful diaspora within the US. Uh, someone uh, actually discovered my Irish lineage uh, when I was running for president. And uh, my first thought was, uh, why didn't anybody discover this when I was running for office in Chicago? <laughs> I would have gotten here sooner. <laughs>